One resolution we fail to consider is one that impacts on our families. There has never been a better time to make a decision to change your parenting habits. Your family is too important not to be the center of your New Year's resolution. So let's talk about becoming the parent you've always wanted to be in the new year. Jonathan Hoffenberg joins me now live and he's a social worker as well as parent at Comparent Community Empowerment and Support Manager at the Parent Center. Jonathan, thank you you so much for your time let's talk about the importance so of much. discussing new year's relationship resolutions for kids and families and when did we get to this point are they different from your ordinary new year's resolutions look i i, I think all resolutions are about intention and certainly one of the i mean one of the uniquenesses of being a parent is that Children are both part of you and part of your life, and in turn, you are part of theirs. And part of the process of parenting is the control you exert and the influence you exert that naturally should fade as they become adults in their own right. So one of the things that, for example, we talk about at the Parent Center is the need for families to be having regular family meetings, getting around as a family and discussing things regardless of whether it's a bad thing or a good thing, because often families are only calling family meetings when something bad has happened. But if you're regularly checking in with your kids, you're starting to get a sense of, of their inner lives, you're communicating, you're being intentional, and that's really the heart of what a New Year's resolution is. So if I had to say one thing to start is start regular engagements with your children so that by next year, by as we go into 2025, you and your family will have a, a far greater understanding of the dynamics of your family, which is the other thing about resolutions, that resolutions need to, for them to be meaningful, they need to be realistic, they need to be met, you know, um, founded on something that's achievable. Yeah, and speaking of having family meetings, where do families start with that? If they don't come from a culture of having those kinds of discussions, how can they get into that process and to that project of talking more to one another? How, what oh, tips would you give? Fantastic question, beautiful question. So, and, and, and let's kind of dovetail this into, if you're the parent of a, of a, of a young child, you know, um, and I say this especially to the dads of very young children because, and especially here South African men, aren't physically engaged enough in the lives of their very young children, you know. And, and part of, and this goes to the resolution, it's about spending meaningful quality time with your children. And that can be through displaying their artwork and talking about the art that they've come back from crash, you know, that could be spending quality time playing the games that they want to play. Dads playing with a three-year-old and their flopsy bunny allows men to express a side of their masculinity that is really good for us, you know. Um, it's about lunchbox notes, lunch, you know, putting a note in their lunchbox. So if you're starting to build up a meaningful engagement with your children about, hey, how are you? How was school today? And they'll invariably say, oh, it was fine. So instead say, well, can you tell me three great things or good things that happened at school today? And maybe you can then tell me one bad thing that happened at school today. So if you're engaging with them, you're building up that relationship that enables you to make those resolutions. And I like those examples that you speak of as well, you know, the note in the lunchbox and having the family meeting, which is not so formal and serious. But mm. what are the other kinds of ways and tools that do we need to start implementing and what should we start cutting off? Oh, I mean, it's always difficult for parents to be to be cutting off. And I think the thing, you know, the elephant that is in the room and here I think it's a lovely return to to old values and, and, and old behavior is limiting screen time and having more deviceless engagements with your children. So you were saying, like, how do you establish a, a family meeting? Well, if every Sunday you're playing a board game, you're playing a card game, especially non-competitive, Monopoly maybe not so much. You know, Monopoly often you, you have more family fights then, but something like Settlers of Catan or or a trivia game or that type of stuff, 
So if you're playing with your children, and, and board games you can play with, you know, children all the way up to their to their ages. So if you're you're doing things like this, you're getting a sense of um, what what their concerns are, you know, what their needs are, that type of stuff. Other examples: getting messy with your children. Often, as parents, we're all about control, but going out there, watering in the garden, and letting it turn into a water fight. You know, jumping in those puddles of mud as 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 parents as well. And um, when we're and it's not about coming down to the child's level, but when we're engaging at the child's level, we're building up incredible social capital. And it's that social capital that you want because when the child is in confusion, when the child is in crisis, if they feel that there's a trusting relationship with their parents, they'll disclose things. Jonathan, you speak about limiting screen time, and I'm sure every parent watching this says, have you tried to take away a device from a teenager and even a toddler? Yes. Yes, yes, I have three. I mean, I have three, three children. Um, you know, one of them 24, one of them 19, one of them 11. Uh, and, you know, screens are, I mean, in a weird way, it's the 11-year-old that's, that's the most difficult. So, mm. okay, a new resolution for parents. Set up a star chart. Set up something that is every day you're engaging with a child and saying, okay, you know, you, you got out of bed and you opened your curtains. That's two stars. You you ate well today. That's two stars. You came for a walk with me with the dog. That's two stars. That's six stars. If we, you know, and you're tying those six stars to something that's achievable, but, you know, it still requires their buy-in. So let's say it's that um, Nintendo Switch game that you really wanted that costs a thousand rands and there's a lot of money. So can you save towards it? Let's have a char star chart towards it. You know that you're 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 uh, earning to. And if you're in, so if you're creating positive associations with them putting down the screen, because the problem with the screen is once children are playing with Lego, um, drawing, playing you know creative games, after a while they really see the benefit of it. But that initial month or so, they're going to push back like crazy. So create positive reinforcements, positive um, um, encouragements. Uh, you speak of one of the other ways we could do this is also by getting messy with the kids. Now, in some cultures, you know, there is the stance of children one side and parents on the other side. Adults do mm -hmm. adult things and children do children mm -hmm. things. How do you mm -hmm. overcome that when you've grown up with that kind of conditioning as well? You know, I think that that cultures have positive aspects and cultures have negative aspects. And often we have a tendency to just focus on the, the negative aspects of, of, of culture. So I think, one, it's about having conversations with yourself and maybe with your children when they can see your hesitancy and they're saying, but mom, you know, Caden's mom gets messy with him all the time. You never want to make brownies with me because... You know, um, you were raised in that way. It's having those conversations with with your children. You know, it's it's seeing, and here we come back to what New Year's resolution is all about. It's seeing the intention. I don't think give up on something that is precious to you, um, unless you really see that the the benefits of it are going to be great. Because, and that's the thing about kids, and that's the thing about parents. If you're a parent that never wants to get messy. By all means, stay in your comfort zones. I mean, change and adventure lie outside them, but nobody should be forced to do what they don't want to do. And just lastly, Jonathan, what advice would you give to parents out there who are struggling with their children and their relationships may be soured right now? Mm. And, and here I suppose we get to uh, resolutions for teens, you know. Um, and I think this is a time of year, especially where there's a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear. Um, we're coming up to matric results being um, announced. You know, kids are thinking about, you know, have they passed their grade? Are they getting into university? So one, allowing them to fail, recognizing that failure exists and, and not, not being judgmental. If your children are in grief, stay and recognize that grief. If they're feeling sad, you know, talk to them about that sadness. Allow them to feel that sadness um, because that's about continuing to attempt to communicate. And that's the other resolution that you can make as a parent to a teenager, that 
if you're creating these opportunities like washing dishes together or doing something that your teen likes, but you're working side by side, and you're able to start to have those conversations. And that conversation might be process commentary. I've noticed that things have really been tense with us the last couple of days. Do you want to talk about it? Self-reflection. I've found you distant, and I'm just wondering, you know, do you feel that too? Why? You know? And it, and sometimes that indirect communication of, oh, the so-and-so seem to be doing well. You know, they seem to be happy as a family. And, and getting the response. And if your teen, if your child is seeing that you're there waiting for them, it might take some time. It might take a month or so, you know. But uh, uh, any parent can improve the relationship with their child if they're intentional and spend time with them. It's just a matter of time before you see the payback. But you're going to be their parent for the rest of their, your life. You know, they're going to be your, chi- your child. Children are worth playing the long game. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time, Jonathan, and your insight. Thank you. And a happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year to you too.